Here's Brody Brazil. I don't think there's any question about it. The NHL's draft lottery system and the setup, it is highly complex. In fact, I'd venture to say that it might even be too difficult to understand for the casual fan. There's a lot going on, and a lot has even changed in recent years. Dare I say that if you're a Sharks fan and you've not found yourself in this position with a rough season behind you and looking forward to a high draft pick opportunity ahead of you, this has not happened in many years. So you aren't even familiar with the thought of this, let alone the intricate details of how exactly the draft lottery works. What are the odds? What's the organization of this? I've tried to spell it out here in 13 steps. Yeah, it takes 13 steps to explain who gets to pick when and where in round one of the upcoming NHL draft. So here we go. I would say in no particular order, but all of this actually is in order. Number one, understand this. All 16 teams who did not qualify for the postseason are in the lottery. That's right. All 16 that missed the playoffs are in the lottery. Now, not all 16 are eligible to get the first or even the second pick. More on that in just a second. But all 16 teams are eligible for lottery status. Okay, we move on to number two. Teams with the fewest points have the higher chance of winning the lottery. And that's obvious, right? Where you finish points-wise is the first determining factor. There are others here. We'll talk about tiebreakers in just a second. But the lower you finish, the higher odds you have of winning the lottery. The Anaheim Ducks, for example, have a 25.5% chance of picking first. They, by a significant margin, have the highest chance of winning this lottery with the first pick. Okay, here's where it gets a little bit complicated. Did you know that only two ping pong balls or, or two teams' picks are determined by ping pong balls? The first overall pick is awarded by a drawing of ping pong balls. And to be clear, it's plural there because it's actually a, a coded sequence of four numbers. So four ping pong balls determine a coded number that corresponds with the lucky team. So let me start this again. The first overall pick is awarded by a drawing of four ping pong balls. A team can only jump 10 spots, like relating to where they finish the regular season versus a draft pick. So only the top 11 teams are eligible for the first pick. I'll let that sink in for just a second. Teams 12 through 16, not eligible to pick first. In fact, if a team in the 12 to 16 range wins the first drawing, the first pick will remain with the worst team. In this case, the Anaheim Ducks. Now, your odds, right, being the 12 to 16 team and having your ping pong balls come up the right way, it's like a 2 to 1% chance. But it's a possibility if that happens. If a 12 to 16 team is drawn first, they don't get to pick first, the Ducks do. So we'll be very clear about that. The next and only other team... And where they select, determined by ping pong balls, is the second overall pick. That is also awarded by a drawing of four coded ping pong balls. If a team in the 12 to 16 range won the first drawing, the worst team, as we just said, keeps the first pick, and they are then excluded from the second drawing. Yeah, you don't get the first and second pick like that. Like the first drawing, though, the second winner can only jump up 10 spots. So if I'm correct about this, you cannot be the 16th seed and draw the number two pick and actually get the number two pick. Okay, thing number five here to know is that the remainder of the draft order is set by the inverse order of the standings. And that's very clear. That's been established as soon as the last game was played. We know the standings in order. The lower you finish, the higher you select after these first two teams are determined by ping pong ball status. So that means, right, that two teams are chosen by ping pong balls. That means that the Anaheim Ducks, who finished last in the entire league, by them finishing last, they are guaranteed a top three pick. Either the right ping pong balls come up for them at number one or number two, or at the very worst, if they're not selected by two, they are guaranteed picking no later than third. Does that make sense? I know. <laughs> this is a lot to comprehend here. The Ducks are guaranteed by finishing last 
a top three pick in the draft. I know, Sharks fans out there don't like to hear it, but that's true. Okay, number seven, teams cannot win the lottery twice in a five-year span. Now, this is a new element. It was uh, installed beginning with the 2022 lottery, so it doesn't really impact this year at all because this could be a team's second year like winning the lottery again, but you can't have this happen twice in a five-year span. And you understand what the league is trying to guard against here. A team continually tanking or struggling that much and getting number one pick after number one pick. Didn't the Oilers have some similar fortunes way back in the day? So maybe it's the Oilers element of the rules here, but teams cannot win the lottery twice in a five-year span, which is something that started last year. Okay, number eight. What about teams in the standings with similar results? How do we how do we tie break here just in case? Ties are broken by teams' total number of regulation wins first. Okay, so teams with the same t- uh, point totals, the first tiebreaker is regulation wins. The next tiebreaker, if they're tied there, is regulation and non-shootout overtime wins. So wins via three-on-three, three, right? We're not talking skills competition, but three-on-three three wins. And then, if we're still tied at that number, then head-to-head wins would be the ultimate tiebreaker. Head-to-head wins in a regular season, how that season series played out. So we've broken that down for the remaining teams as we get through this lottery here. Okay, number nine, playoff teams that did not win their division and did not make their respective conference finals sorted by points are assigned the next picks. Okay, so we're out of the first 16 teams, right? We're on to the the second 16 teams, all the ones that qualified for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Those playoff teams that did not win their division and did not make it to the conference finals, they are then sorted by points, again, in inverse order, and are assigned the appropriate picks. What about playoff teams that did win their division and did not make the conference finals? They're next. They're sorted by points in inverse order, and they are assigned the next picks. It's getting a little bit more understandable here, more formulaic here. Okay, at number 11 of 13, conference final losers sorted by points, right? Because how do you pick out the conference final loser from the East or West? Sorted by points, right? So uh, fewer points goes first from the regular season for picks 29 and 30. There's 32 NHL teams, right? So they're near the end. And obviously we will get to the Stanley Cup runner-up. We lose the final. You're assigned pick number 31, and if you win the Stanley Cup, congratulations, but you're also picking last in the 2023 NHL Draft. Wow, that was a lot. I think I think there is a misconception that there's ping pong ball after ping pong ball, and there's just one ball instead of four coded balls, and uh, it's not that way. As you can see here, only two teams are determined via ping pong ball, so the earliest picks are chosen that way. Uh, But again, there is an opportunity for a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh seeded team from the regular season, seventh worst seeded team, to have the opportunity to pick first. There is a chance. I would say it's relatively slim. Again, even the top team, the most favored team to pick first is the Ducks. It's still basically only a one in four chance that they will get the first pick. Now, they are guaranteed a top three pick. But picking first is far from a guarantee for Anaheim uh, or even the second and third place teams. And I'll go back to the San Jose Sharks. They finished fourth to last in the NHL's regular season standing. So uh, where will they get this opportunity? I'll make a totally separate video uh, running through the simulations on a website called tankathon.com. If you're not familiar with it, it's time to have some fun in the coming uh, several weeks as we get ready for the NHL's draft lottery. You'll you'll get some simulations. Uh, so we'll do that in a separate video. But as for right now, if you enjoyed this, thumbs up. Hit me in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I can see you next time.